Welcome again to another podcast episode of Inside the Line, Real Stories by Real Cops. Dave Radigan here, across from Dale Lawrence. And uh, Dale, I would I would say, how was your weekend? But I know how your weekend went. Yeah, me and you least. were fast friends all weekend. We were, we were, we were together like Charles Grodin. And uh, Robert De Niro and uh, what was it? Midnight Run? No. Yeah. No, oh, I, I don't Midnight know. Midnight Run? I think it was, was Midnight it? Run. Yeah. I'm really not a movie buff, Dave. I know. You're not a movie buff. Yeah. Well, fr- Friday night, we, a comedy show. You and Nathan ripped it up. Jimmy Dunn. Yeah. And who's the other girl there? It was a girl there. Was Caroline name? Cook. But Caroline it, was sat- Cook. it was Saturday. It was Saturday. Was it Saturday? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe I have the dementia and not you, Dave. I thought it was Friday, but it was Saturday. Yeah, and then Sunday we went to the Celtics together, and it was a lot of fun. We sat in the the, the rich uh, people, the seats. rich people section. We were in the rich people section. We were the in the bourgeois lux- section, Dave. We were in the uh, overlooking all those? the peasants the below lux- us. The luxury suite. Well, somebody <laughs> somebody gave you a great word for it, plebeians. The plebeians below us, and we just sat there and we ate free food, steak tips, hot dogs, pizza, it's, it's, it's cupcakes. Fu- it's funny, isn't it? I've I've uh, I've I've been trying to think how many times I've been in the box like that maybe twice maybe three times and it's it's just different it's a different experience oh, absolutely you're further away from the action it's a really nice social situation it's nice to get free food versus going to, out to the garden and getting i have no idea i got a i got a coffee from a vendor i have no idea how much it, it costs but i paid for it on my credit card which is a mistake because what happens now is you get a beer which is like 18 dollars at the garden now. yep 18 dollars for a beer and then they want a tip so you hit 20%. And now you're paying $4 for one pour. It's madness. So it's always better to pay cash when you go to the garden. That's Absolutely. My, that's my theory. And it's even better when you go on somebody else's dime and you sit in the luxury suite like we did. I just like sitting with like all the patients. smart people, all the educated people, Dave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> were, they all, were they all educated? Was that guy a firefighter? He had a firefighter shirt on. You didn't talk to him. I didn't so really funny. talk to anybody. I talked to you and and Jim Roberti and Paul Nardizzi. Nobody else? Great comics from the North Shore, from New England. And then last night you did your big, uh, you did the podcast, you went on with Sticks Larson. Sticks Larson. Yeah, another cop podcast. with Cop tales and cocktails. Yes. I know you're saying you don't, you're not, uh, you've changed. Did it change you in any way? Say that again? Did it change you? Did the experience change you in any way? It was uh, Sticks. And a guy named Howard Doss. Mm -hmm. I'm like, on our podcast, if you use the example, I would be Sticks, but from a smaller level police department, Uh 40,000, where he has 400,000. 140,000, which is Howard Doss, ICU nurse from Tulsa, Oklahoma. He would be you. You both run each other's show, and you try to elicit conversation. So our podcasts are very similar. But what I did get. I know. There's only one difference between the two. (laughs) There's only the only difference is about seventy nine thousand listeners. Oh yeah, probably yeah. They obviously they have a uh, bigger platform that they're moving off of, so they have more listeners. But you know something, I think podcasts in general, it's all about kind of just speaking about what you like, and you'll have some people out there who support you, and some other podcasts have ten times more I'm, support. So I'm I'm overall I'm very uh, happy with the quality of our listeners. I think we have a top quality list. Oh, absolutely. We may not have quantity, but we have quality. We're still striving for quantity, Dave. Yeah, we are striving for <laughs> qu- qu- quantity and quality, but uh, which is, all right, so that's enough sucking up to the listeners. Uh, yes. So one of the things you thought of, this is a great name, Cocktails and Cocktails. Yeah. Great name. And I came up with some other names, Zach, because when you look at Inside the Line, if you do inside the line on a Google search for podcast, yeah. there's a lot out there. Yeah. A lot of them are police related. Yeah. But like I said before, there's some other ones that are just generic inside the lines of gardening, inside the lines of food, inside the lines of everything. So there's a lot of podcasts with that name. How about inside the lines of penmanship? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. But I know inside the line was uh, a show on ESPN for a long time. It might even still be there. But then we've got colon. Real Stories by Real Cops. But I bet if we did Real Stories by Real Cops and we Google that, I bet there'd be a bunch of them as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I came up with an idea. So you have Cop Tales and Cocktails. Which is basically Cop Tales, which is stories by cops, and cocktails because they drink during the show. Yeah, right? I, I had a drink last night. I had a um, drink during the show. That what what do they have? I had some vodka and Red Bull. Ugh. I was hammered. 
I bet you were. I bet you were. <laughs> it's funny because I heard somebody outside my window howling at the moon last night. And I didn't yeah, think it, it was been you. Me. Anyway, my neighborhood, it could have been anyone. So I came up with some ideas for different names. If we're going to rebrand yeah. our podcast. We're not going to rebrand. No, we're not going to rebrand. But, I got but some, if we got, were. Yeah. So if I, got, we were. I got four names and we're going to start off. The first one is going to be Heroes and Heroine. Which would be, of course, cops doing heroin. Oh, I, was it was, I thought it was like a heroin, like a, a female cop. But no, I this know, is all yeah. drugs, brother. Oh, drugs. Yeah. So, so you, so you did some thinking about this, and you came up with cop names that had to do with drugs. Heroes, yeah. heroes, and heroin. Tell me about it. Oh, well, heroes and heroin, and, and basically the story is: I looked out there and I said, are there any cops that either were arrested on duty under the influence of heroin? I didn't really find that. But what I did find, I found a nice police detective, Highland Park Police Department in Detroit. That doesn't sound like Detroit. Uh, oh, no, not <laughs> Detroit. <laughs> detective Tiffany Lipkovich pleads guilty to conspiring to distribute heroin. So basically what she did, the detective, yeah, who was yeah. a detective, Jesus, you know, for 15, 20 years, she hooked up with some informant. And the informant was doing the drug deals, and the detective would either get some drugs and provide them to her, or she kind of be the middle middle person or the middle lady, and she was getting certain amounts of money for all the drug deals. So she was she had an informant, and she was supplying the informant. Yeah, it was. It's a little bit vague, but yeah, she was supplying, right. supplying okay. demand. She was supplying, and she was also you know, acting as a cover. That's shaking down drug dealers okay. and drug users. Oh, I get it. So yeah. she shakes down somebody for somebody, and then she hands her drugs over to somebody yeah, so else for a it's price. All, you're never, you're never going to get the true story when you're talking about, one, a corrupt cop, yeah. and two, talking about drug dealers and users, because they all lie. Yeah. So basically, that's the story. Is there other stuff that went on? Prostitution, guns, and all sorts of shit? I'm sure there is, but she's being charged with heroin distribution. She's looking at 40 years in prison. I don't believe she's been sentenced yet. Really? Yeah. But she's been convicted. Been convicted. Well, she she pled guilty. Wow. So she obviously she won't get 40 years because if she pleads guilty, then she's looking for a lesser sentence. Yeah. Because if you're going to get 40 years, you might as well go to trial right. and get 40 years. Well, this is, right. This is the argument against the three stri- any three strikes policy is that you you get automatic or, or the death penalty because you're going to get an automatic appeal and everything's going to cost more money. Yeah, she ain't going to do death for that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm she might get killed in prison case. being a cop. Do cops get killed in prison? Do they get, well, a, a lot of them are in PC, protective custody. Yeah. Do they get harassed? Could they get sexually abused? Could they be picked on? I would think that in prison, like Derek Chauvin. Yeah. With the uh, George Floyd incident. He, is he going to spend most of his life in there in protective custody? Right. Or are they going to put him out in the yard? I think he'd probably be killed within a day or two. If they put him in the yard, yeah. You would think. Yeah. yeah, you would think. Either that, they'd just sexually abuse him for a while, then kill him and just throw him away. So you're in a, if you're in protective <laughs> custody in jail, that's a, that's a happy thought. If you're in, in protective custody in jail, are you in solitary or are you just, what do you do? You'd what pretty you- much be in solitary. You would be around no one. You'd almost It's almost like being on death row. You're in solitary confinement and probably one to two hours a day, you get out of your cell for exercise and stuff like that. This is why I don't commit crimes. Yeah, don't commit crimes. That's why I don't commit crimes. Because even if I wasn't in solitary, I don't think prison would go well for me. Probably not, Dave. I'd have to do a really white collar. The thing is, I don't have enough money for a good lawyer. And as you know, in this country, (laughs) if if you're not well represented, which means if you don't have a lot of money, you're not allowed to do things like stride onto the stage at the Academy Awards and slap somebody in the face. Oh, yeah. You can be guilty as hell. OJ, great lawyer. Walks free. I got to tell you this. Yeah, yeah, they did do. I mean, that was a great trial. I mean, obviously, it was a long time ago. It's not current events. The longer that I live, the more that I see that having money is a really, really, really good thing. And and it doesn't even matter what race you are. It has nothing to do with race. It has everything to do with money and having a great lawyer. Right. And the only, uh, well, let's put it this way. I think it's probably a subject worth studying, uh, whether or not your race plays a role in it, but- Obviously, demographically, one of the reasons that so many so many black people have so much trouble in the, within the law is that they're poor. Yeah, and I mean they've yeah. got all those all those factors that are linked to crime that that are not necessarily the causes: being poor, 
poor family situation. Well, you're also cetera, missing, cetera, you're cetera. missing one of the really big variables there. What's that? Why commit the crime? Right. Oh, no. Why I'm, kill I'm, someone? Why rape someone? Why sell drugs? Yeah. Why kidnap someone? You're at the mercy of the court at that point, regardless of what race you are, how much money you yeah, have. If you kidnap you someone, Dave, you're done. All right, fine. And that's why, <laughs> that's why I don't do that yeah. stuff. Otherwise, I'd be kidnapping all the time. Oh, absolutely. If it wasn't for the, my, my concerns about deterrence, I know what you're saying. I just think it's a situation. Well, never mind. What's that, just, what was that show, quick, Beretta? Another cult classic. Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. That's good. Don't do it, baby. Whatever happened to that Robert Blake? Ah, well, he was out to eat with his wife. <laughs> he walked into out to his car, and his wife was out of the car or something like that. And she got shot in the head. And he went back to eat, and he was found innocent of possibly shooting his wife in the head. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think back. Is that is that how it happened? But I remember. Yeah, it was something like that. that. Yeah, it didn't look. Uh, it didn't yeah, look. No good. one. You can't convict. What's his name? Tony Beretta. Robert Blake was oh, the Robert, actor. Yeah, but yeah. the the, the uh, show was Beretta. Beretta. Yeah, he, yep. he's not guilty of anything. He's a cop. Everyone loves <laughs> <Yeah>. him. <laughs> Very tough to tough to. Uh, it's tough to convict the actors. Jesse Smollett. Oh, yeah. He was convicted. Yeah, but he's out now. A but anyway. Slap, a slap on the wrist and a ruined let me get, career. Let me get you back on track, oh, yeah, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> this will all be gone in the editing room. I know. Sometimes I talk and I think, why, why, why am I doing this? Why am I ruining this podcast? So the next one we got, we, I actually, you know, I did find a, uh, my mistake. I think I said earlier that I didn't find an, an officer who was high on heroin on duty, but I did find an officer, Matthew D. Ellery of Middlesex. He was the uh, a police officer at Franklin Township Police Department. They were looking for him. They were calling him on the radio. And this happens a lot. So he's on duty. He's on duty. He's, he's in his to... cruiser. Yeah. And they're calling him. And he doesn't answer. Shh. And that, I've Shh. seen that happen Shh. before. Shh. <laughs> officer Lawrence. Shh. Officer Lawrence. And they would do that with you. You'd be out getting a roast beef sandwich. A lot of times you leave your cruiser and you go home or you go into a store and you forget to turn your portable on. But okay. that's only a couple of minutes. All right. Yeah. Yeah, for most only cases. a couple of minutes. Unless you're asleep in your car. Unless you're asleep in your car having, and your car's having, off and your radio's off. Having sex in the car. Have, yeah, that's one of the things that could get you in trouble, too. Those are the two, right? Yeah, I mean, probably generally, the biggest ones. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so they, they couldn't guy, get in touch with this guy. Yeah. So they figured he was asleep in his car. Yeah, so they send, send out the patrol units. Yep. And they look for him. They find him. And he's ODing on heroin. He was dead ODing or? He would have died, but they found him soon enough. They sent EMS, paramedics. They gave him some Narcan. And he came too. They took him to the hospital, probably stayed there for a day or two. Then obviously he went through the process of being fired and he was ultimately fired from his job. He couldn't just claim PTSD or something like that? Well, he could. <laughs> I mean, when you claim an addiction, when a cop claims, yeah. I mean, so often we see somebody messes up and, oh, I have an addiction to sex or I have an addiction to this or that. So they go to detox, they dry out, they go to a treatment program. And they keep their job, even if they don't believe they have a problem. Yeah, I've, I've seen that in law enforcement. I've seen that in the military. Okay. You have alcohol issue, a drug issue, whether it be cocaine, a marijuana, or popping pills. And if they believe you're redeemable, certain departments or even certain aspects of the military will put you into counseling or therapy or something like that. And if you decide to, if they, well, if they decide to keep you in, the, in, in that what that part of the military or, or that department, then it's going to be up to them. But I would think that this individual probably has a track record of something. Mm -hmm. I think a heroin addiction is a lot more sinister than someone who might have smoked a joint and came to work stoned or had a couple right. of beers. Yeah. A little, you don't really see people who have heroin addictions getting clean. You have it's very difficult really? to get a heroin addict clean. Really? You can you can dry out a, a an alcoholic guy who smokes a little weed. Oh my God! Right, crime of the century. You can deal with that. Maybe a small little painkiller addiction or something like that. You can try to deal with that. But heroin, heroin's a one way street, brother. And at the end of that street's a cliff, and you're falling off it, baby. Uh, at some point in your life, have you ever have you ever dealt with a cop where you would see them during the shift and you would think that guy's wasted? That guy's wasted. No, not really. I mean, when I first came on back in the early 90s, I think some of the older school guys 
guys who came on in the 60s and they were getting yeah. over oh, in their career. Yeah, they were. I think guys, were. guys in the 60s, policing in the 50s, 60s, guys would come to work with a little buzz on. Yeah. They might go into a bar on a walk and beat and have a drink. Yeah, they would allow so, to drink. So, yeah, I, I saw a little of that, but no, I've never really been around. I've never been around a cop on duty that was hammered. That was high how about, how on about, pills. Have you, have you heard stories of this? I've from absolutely other cops? heard stories from other cops, from other departments, state, local, federal. Absolutely, it happens. But it's, it's not as common as one may think. All right. What's the next one? What's the next one? This is a great one for you, Dave. Yep. Perps and PCP. PCP? The horse, yeah, tranqu- whole, yeah. the horse tranquilizer? PCP? No, the, uh, the hallucinogenic drug. There's a, there's a whole list of like, what is it and, and what are the effects? And uh, so why did you, why did you go it's over not, that? Let everyone know what it is. It's, it's not like the pipe that you use when you're doing the plumbing at your house. Oh, absolutely not. You can probably <laughs> smoke it through that pipe. Here's what I know about PCP. Like many uh, recreational drugs, it started out using, uh, for medical use, doctors loved it. An anesthetic that can stop people from feeling pain. Uh, but it can also cause hallucinations. It can come in an oil, a liquid, a powder, crystal, you, or pill. Look at, look at you, oh, Dave. You're doing good. I know. As long as the words are in front of me, I can read them. The color depends on what form the PCP is in and how pure it is. Uh, and you basically can sniff it, swallow it, inject it, or smoke it. And the effects besides hallucinations it can make you paranoid, aggressive, and violent. And like I mentioned, the hallucinations, you can hear things. You can see things. You can hear things, which for me is just like a normal day. Normal day, Dave, normal when you're off your meds. When I'm off my meds. <laughs> I, I, I'm i looking at this list, and I'm just seeing this thing for the first time. I love the first story. Tell me about the first one. Man takes PCP and attempts to eat his son's eyeballs. Seems reasonable. So it was in the, it was, This was in the Midwest a few years ago, and they get a call to this house, and there's a guy all junked up on PCP, out of his mind, completely out of his mind, because the whole thing about PCP is when you see it where it's really bad, when people are paranoid, where they're hallucinating, and then they become aggressive, then they have a very, very high pain threshold. And we're actually going to get into an an um, audio clip about that in a few minutes. So so it's very much like somebody who's uh, got a mental health problem, coupled with the fact that there's this super strength. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they, they went to the house and the, the guy had the head of son down and he was trying to gouge his eyeballs out and the cops were able to subdue him. They didn't shoot him or anything. They were able to, you probably had like eight or 10 cops on that individual. And the guy, you know, guys are like 150 pounds. Yeah. But they're wiry, crazy, crazy strength, Dave. Yeah. That's the, I, I always think the phenomenon of cra- of crazy strength. It's there. It's, it's, it's fascinating. There. Oh, absolutely. But it's, uh, and unfortunately for cops, if somebody is a drug addict, and that's their drug of choice, then you've got to deal with it. And you might not even know what's happening. Yeah, until I think, all I of think a probably it's... only once or twice in my career. It's not PCP isn't that common in the Northeast, in Massachusetts, more common on the West Coast, places in, in you know middle America and places like that. Yeah, middle America. Yeah, middle America. A great place. Just wipe out middle yeah. America with PCP. I don't and you're think all you set. should. I don't think you should wipe out middle America. <laughs> I'm not like you, but like I said, I bet it's. All, I bet. Well, I don't know. I don't know much about PCP. Anything ever happened in Houston? Houston, Texas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. A guy tries to eat his girlfriend. He's on PC. He killed her, and then he actually did eat his girlfriend because when they she was dead and parts of her was missing. They, he went into the hospital, took some contents out of his stomach, and that were her contents. You mean he cannibalized? Yeah, cannibalized. Eater, yeah, cannibalized. Well, that's the academic word here, Dave, cannibalized. <laughs> well, you know, this, uh, <laughs> all right, I'm now going to point out what people could have could have thought listening to you talk about eating his girlfriend. But anyway, man takes PCP and rips off his genitalia at a local middle school. I like that note. <laughs> I like that note. Hopefully he wasn't the middle school principal, but yeah, he was just a guy – in the field, you know, the kids were in the field. He was probably watching some kids hanging out, and they get a call, and there's just this maniac in the corner in his car trying to rip his nuts off. Oh, and he didn't, they don't they don't even know what they're doing. I'm not trying. I'm not sympathizing with them at all, but they're just so whacked out that they don't even know what they're doing. Completely out of touch with reality. That's awful. Absolutely, that's awful. Why do you bring these things up? Why do you bring these? Because we're talking up? perps and PCP. I have to. I have to perps and PCP. I like that. So you're talking about doing an entire show, like every single week, we'll do a podcast on perps. Yeah, and we'll PCP. get some. We'll get some perps in the studio. We'll give them some PCP. 
And we'll just let it see what happens, Dave. It's a good idea. It'll be fun. We can get cameras up here to see what they do with the audio We're have furniture. To, this is just an your, audio podcast at this knick-knacks. point. We're going to have to go audio visual, oh, we'd baby. We'd have to do it. We'd have to do it. Oh. Because if nothing else, how are we going to convict them after they strangle us to death? <laughs> well, I, you know something? To really get a, a, an idea of what it's like to be on PCP, I got a little audio clip. Why are y'all doing this to me, though? Ah! No! Why are y'all doing this to me? Don't! 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 You know what that sounds like? That sounds like me going through my apartment trying to find my keys when I'm in a hurry. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want, I give a little context to that. The guy was in a like a little grocery store, small little corner grocery store. He initially, because it was about a five minute video, he seemed a little paranoid, but he didn't seem that whacked out initially. Then when a couple more cops came in, his paranoia escalated very quickly. And he was, as you heard him, he was screaming, they're trying to kill me. They weren't trying to kill him. They were just trying to get him to go on the ground so they could cuff him and take him for medical attention so he yeah. doesn't die from a PCP overdose, have a massive heart attack. But that wasn't happening, so he became aggressive. So you might have been able to hear in that audio, there was a little, some weird crackling sound. They tased him about four times. He was still talking. He was still standing upright. So the Most, taser had no effect. Oh, absolutely no effect. Most people who get tased, the average human who gets tased, regardless of how big they are, from professional football player to little person, they're going to drop to the ground and they're not going to be able to talk because their whole body's going to lock up. This guy, being on PCP, was able to override all those effects. Wow. And he just kept on fighting and fighting and fighting, and they finally got him out of there. Don't tell the NFL about this. Put, <laughs> but I'll put them all on PCP. Yeah, put them all you want to know what would be great? UFC. The UFC on PCP. That's a great one. That's a good one. You should call. You should call somebody. <laughs> I'm going to call them up. I got a say, great one for you. I've got a fantastic idea. <laughs> so you think we should do a show every week, Heroines and Hero, uh, Heroes and Heroin or Perps and PCP. And well, Focus those are the only. first two, Dave. Okay. Oh, you got more. Oh, I got, I got two you, more coming up, you brother. Were, you were really in a, uh, in a creative session. Well, I got I got to compete with cocktails and cocktails, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the next one? All right, the next one is the PD, the police department in LSD. Ooh, that's a that's right up your alley, right up my alley. Oh. LSD was a big drug back in the 60s, 70s, and early 80s. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. How many hits did you do, Dave? I I, I did I didn't like it. You I didn't did like I it? did a couple, but I didn't like it because uh, I'll tell you why. I'd wake up the next day and I'd just be stupid. <laughs> And I didn't like being stupid. I mean, the you know, the first couple of hours when you're seeing things turn into rivers and things like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. That was fine. Uh, you know, you go to a concert and, and you see things. But the next day, I The whole I, body I feels it. like it's going to just crumble on it. It's going to kind of cave in on itself. Well, I'm not, not some, my body did not feel like that, but okay. my brain didn't work. I just felt like my, my whole head was stuffed with uh, cotton. Oh, there you go. And um, so I didn't like it. I didn't like feeling, I didn't like the fact that the next day it was... It just wasn't worth it. Yeah. I mean, after like probably my 55th hit of LSD, fifty five. I think I stopped <laughs> then, counting around 55. Then you learned so, your lesson? Yeah. Well, I was like, <laughs> should I do 56? And I'm like, nah, you know something? 55 was probably a, a good number to stop at. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was experimenting. True story, but go ahead. I was, I was experimenting and I wanted to be sure that I had a proper sample size. Absolutely. And I think 55 hits of LSD in a two-year span from age 15 to 17, 17 and a half was great. Yep. And you wanted to 15 use- 15 to 17 and a half? Yeah, you started about, early. Yeah, I think it was, it was I, actually, I remember the night, it was New Year's Eve. I don't remember, it was probably New Year's Eve, 1981. I remember the night. I remember the house I was at. I'm not going to say it. Okay. The guy has since passed away. Um, I went to high school with him. Did he? he said, you went to high school with a guy, he passed away? A few years did, ago, yeah. And you did LSD at his house? When, we, when, we, when I was in 10th grade. And he passed away in his early 50s? He passed away probably three years ago. What did so he die from? 54. What did he die from? I think just sudden death. Just a sudden death, yeah. Okay. It wasn't around Massachusetts. Oh, okay. Out of the country, but I believe it was just a sudden death, yeah. Just, he was just watching a hockey game and one team I think maybe if, if, he did, if he did a lot of PCP, not PCP, if he did a lot of LSD like me, he's going to live a long, healthy life. Look at me. I'm 57. I feel great, Dave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, look, you look about 75. But, uh, unfortunately, I, I couldn't, unfortunately. I couldn't. Unfortunately, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, don't know that this is, I don't know that this is actually going to be a viable subject because I really couldn't find any cop story out there that a cop on duty 
was high on LSD. They were high on marijuana. They were drunk, but right. I couldn't find anyone high on LSD. All I really found was there was a kid a few years ago in the Fort Worth, Texas area. He baked some cookies and he put like an emblem on them, mad like mothers against drunk driving. Yep. And he would bring them to the police department, kind of do a little con like he's a, I represent mad and I'm giving cookies for the nice cops. But he, what he did was he put some LSD and some marijuana in the cops <laughs> to get the cops all <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Did it work? It did, but I think after around the third or fourth department, they figured it out. Then they kind of set the kid up. And then on like the fifth department, when he was supposed to show up, they arrested him. Oh, that's just. I don't, I don't know how much time he did in jail. He, he was a young kid. He was around 17 or 18. So I, I'm probably thinking he probably didn't do a lot of time in jail. But you've heard stories like that. When I was uh, in high school, we had kids used to talk about, hey, let's put a hit of LSD in the teacher's Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Really? Yeah, absolutely. That's happened before. You you were nice. Oh, I, I didn't do you that. You were a nice bunch of kids. I did think about it, but I said, you know, this guy could die from that. I go, that'd right. be fucked up. Yeah, that would be. But kids have done that. Kids absolutely, have done that? Absolutely, they've done that. Across the country or in your town? Across the country. Okay. Absolutely. And yeah. you're a professor, right? Yeah. Hopefully someone from your school is listening. Professor Radigan drinks coffee Tuesday <laughs> between 9 and 10 at you know, our room A210. You know something? <laughs> I, had a, I had a student, right? I had a student, Claydare was his name. I'm not going to tell you his last name. Good kid, good student. But he would come in a couple, couple minutes late for class almost every single day. Now, maybe it wasn't late every day, but sometimes he'd be late. But he always had coffee, never brought coffee for me. Oh, really? Yeah. He I, probably did he fail? He was an A student, but he got a D, have, didn't I he? I should have flunked him. I always <laughs> regret giving him that A. Yeah. No, he was a good kid. He was a good kid. But um, anyway, yeah, nobody, nobody's ever, nobody's drugged by coffee. But I got to tell you, some of my students have been roofied. Absolutely. They, they have. told me about it. My generation never had to worry about people giving us drugs that we without telling us first. Yeah, because if a girl wanted to have sex with you, Dave, she would just call you up and say, Dave, what are you doing tonight? You want to have sex. You maybe got one phone call in your high school <laughs> career, but other guys got 30. But then some nit would figure out, you know something? No one's calling me on the phone. Yeah. I'm going to throw a roofie in her drink, and I'm going to have my way with her, especially in college campuses, high school parties, and stuff like that. That's oh, horrible. It's horrible. So anyway, but no, but no cops. No, no cops. you know, I think this is this kind of, I read a little research out there. LSD in some clinical studies, and it's still in clinical study, oh, but yeah. that using it to try to help people with PTSD and to treat depression. It's still in the trial phase. There's some good literature on it, but I, obviously we can't really articulate it because, you know, we're as smart as doctors, Dave, but we don't have Dr. Radigan in front of us or PhD Lawrence. Yeah. After our name. We're so we're just going to kind of back off on that, but it, it's definitely we're being used out there. as smart as any doctors. <laughs> I'm sure if you had a doctor and they were they were us, you'd be thinking, I got to call my lawyer for malpractice before this even starts. Yeah. So I don't see how we could do that as a show every single week. I think it might be. Yeah. The only, um, the only two viable ones right now are pretty much, well, perps and PCP. That, that's a great one. Yeah. And heroes and heroin. Oh, they're both great. Yeah, those, they're both those two incredible. I think yeah. we could do show after show after show about either one of them. Got any more? Oh, I got my last one. <laughs> and this is a great one. If you're not a fan of felons, this is for you. It's felons and fentanyl. <laughs> <laughs> we get a room full of felons. Yeah. Throw some fentanyl oh. and some gummy bears. Yeah. Everyone grab a gummy beer. And whoever got the one with fentanyl. Doesn't make it through the podcast, brother. Oh, there's no no Narcan on hand for that for oh, that podcast. That's smart. <laughs> and then we can put it off on social media, and nothing would happen to us. Oh, we'd pick up more listeners. Yeah, absolutely. If you're if you're a if you're not a fan of felons, meaning yep. rapists, murderers, sex offenders, stuff like that, right. those would be felons. If you're not a fan of those people, you're gonna love our podcast because <laughs> every week we're gonna lose. Every week we sooner lose or later we're going to go under because there's not going to be enough felons. It's, it's going to be just like The Bachelor, except instead of a rose, you get killed. <laughs> so week to week, that's uh, all right. Well, those are great, uh, great ideas. I don't know. We'll have to vote on those afterwards. Yeah, if, if you like the ideas, hit us up. If you got another idea, let For us a new know. New name to the show? What's that? For new name to the show? Yeah, because we're, we're trying. We're throwing them out there. Right now, it's, it's inside the line, real stories by real cops. But it very easily could be felons and fentanyl, the last man standing. <laughs> <laughs> I 
think they already do last man standing, but we'll figure it out. That Fellas was a quick one this week. We usually go an hour. We only got in 30. It was a long night for me last night, Damon. The Celtics tell. game was a long game, it hanging out long. with you, Roberti, well, and not Dizzy. You know what's funny to me? But we left the Celtics game, and you were saying something like, haven't you Haven't you eaten enough for the, for the week? And uh, well, You had a hot date last night, didn't you, brother? I, I did. I had a hot date, but here's my point. My point is this. You had relatively little to eat there. The two people we were with, not you and me, the other two, I thought that I think they ran out of food. They're like on death, the death row. They're like death row inmates <laughs> having their last meal, <laughs> especially that Roberti guy. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Anyway, that wraps it up for this week. We'll be back next week and we'll be much better. I'm Dave Radigan. This is Dale Lawrence. And uh, if you have any ideas, send it to us. Thanks.